My uncles are, those guys are funny. I have this one uncle who I had heard, and he had a heart attack. And uh, he's one of my favorite uncles, too, so I was a little upset. I found out it wasn't actually a heart attack. He had, <laughs> he had taken, <laughs> this guy's like 65, he had taken too much Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he's young. He's got like this 30-year-old girlfriend he's taking too much Viagra. I heard that story, and uh, his name is Harold. I, I said, "Okay, that's Harold. I understand now." <laughs> yeah. One of the first musicians I met when I came to town was uh, was your dad. Yeah, yeah and uh, and uh, your aunt. Uh, and uh, we were, she was she was living up above Sunset. Yeah, it was a beautiful place up there, man. You know, that's where I met him. And I said, "Wow, this is this is Hollywood," you know. And uh, uh, consequently, uh, uh, Greg and I became close friends, and that's why I became your brother's godfather. <laughs> you know, so uh, what got me into the music business was my family. I'm a second generation musician. My dad was a band leader. My uncle, his brother lived two doors from us and he was a, he was a music teacher and a band instructor played violin and trumpet, you know. So uh, I have uh, managed to, uh, to work steadily. Everything's cool, man, cool. <laughs> uh, we're at the old house here. This is where I grew up, mostly. Yeah, man. How you doing? Oh, man, he's good, man. Hey, where's Chris still crashed on? <laughs> What's up, man? Oh, <laughs> Have a nice day, man. I grew up in Hollywood. Yeah, we were just a bunch of kids that had bikes. You can't drive. Um, your mom was not gonna take you nowhere. We would travel to, to the beach. That's, that's pretty far to get to when you're 14, 15 by yourself. <laughs> Away from home, there's nobody telling you what to do. You know, you just have to make sure you leave two or three hours before it gets dark. Man, what great exercise that was. Man. Did you have like the best friends around? It's really weird because if you know Peter, he was weird because he doesn't speak, he doesn't speak right. <laughs> Gordon, my other friend, he, he kind of calls him like Yoda because he says things that are right but don't sound right. When I was little, he never said any bad words and I got him to start cursing and start, I started teaching him bad words because he, he never said anything. He would say fudge and he would say, he would say shoot. Is there's a place for it? I don't think there's anything more honest than when you hit yourself in the hand and you go, fuck. <laughs> Someone like that, that's real honest. I mean, when you when you go into something that's real, where you have to be real polite, you have to almost be dishonest in a sense. Because you go, oh darn, I just hurt my finger. And you know, it's bleeding, the nail's falling off, and it's broken. It's like, oh, it, it will be okay. <laughs> it's, it's not honest. It's like... It's, there's appropriate places for things. There's a certain degree of honesty that you have to have with yourself and with people you know. I mean, I know you, so I can curse in front of you. If if the president were here, I don't know if I could curse in front of him. It's very complicated. I mean, the whole thing about family, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like y you yourself, that you came from this thing, you're an individual, but... You know, you came from so like a, else, uh, a group before you could really uh, consciously separate yourself. Ancestry or my ancestors play into who I am. And it really got me thinking some more after we had spoken. And I thought about it some more. And I just, you know, it made me think about a lot of things. Wow. Because I always think of 
myself as an individual, I'm not one of those people that really plays into, well, I'm from this and I'm from that and my people are this and they did that because it doesn't really matter to me. It's kind of like, you know, what, what am I doing? Right. What have I done? What can I say? Right. Nobody in my family really talks too much. They're more about, I guess they're kind of all kind of like me in that they're all kind of about more about what they did or what they're doing now. Mm. But on the other hand, when I went to go see my grandparents and I talked to them about their parents and their grandparents, you know, it, ma- it made me think there is some kind of connection. Its meaning is relative to whatever kind of meaning you give it, I suppose. But and, and it might be also a thing about being immigrants or talking about their immigrant roots. They're from a period where that's not something you're proud of. A lot of people have hang-ups about that. My mom's side, where they were from Ireland, Irish Catholic, my mother's father was from the South, is Baptist. And he always said that he was the Anglo-Saxon or something like that, but it turns out he, if you go back far enough, he's Irish too. And then on my father's side, I remember being a little and coming across these uh, the yarmulkes in my grandfather's uh, bureau, and he just wouldn't even talk about it. See, see. He wouldn't even, you know, I didn't know what they were, and he, I was like, what, what are these? And, oh, you know. He said, I'll wear them for some wedding sometimes. Or he wouldn't go into it. My family, like, split up and kind of has a lot of problems. But they're people, like, good people. And they're, my parents, they're smart people, mm-hmm. educated people. And they made mistakes. And so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to make mistakes. <laughs> you got to forgive people. Yeah, and forgive yourself. What's the bike was to uh, where you grew up? Um, I don't know. It doesn't bother me. I live close to it anyways. Not that far. It's been a while. That's all. When I was growing up, just a lot of different... It, it was real... It was real crazy. So what, where do they stay, where do they stay now? What? Your, uh, your mom and your sister. Uh, I think they're doing you. Uh. My uncles and everybody did a lot of drugs and did a lot of things okay. that they weren't supposed to do. Uh. So that's why I don't drink or smoke or do anything. So I haven't really seen any of them since about five years. The state boys they used to call themselves. State boys? Mm-hmm. Something like that. State street boys or state street. I don't know. One of my uncles went to jail for something that happened here that nobody would ever tell me about. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Some story about revenge that I never got the full explanation. That uncle drank himself to death. How old was 36. My mom once told me I shouldn't have such a temper. Oh. I used to have a bad temper when I was growing up. Crunchy said the same thing. Yeah? Yeah. Because of what happened to my uncle. Oh. In the park, but she was saying, so, what? Yeah. All I knew was that something happened in the park, and he wound up going to jail. So either he beat the crap out of somebody or worse. Well, how did you how did you motivate yourself to get into college and all that stuff, coming out of, the, out of a place like that? I don't know. Uh, and, and, I don't <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I just kind of kept... I kept doing things to prove people wrong, I think. Uh, I went to Catholic school and I got scholarships. They were good enough to where they didn't pay very much if they paid anything. I always stepped, stayed out of trouble and tried not to do too many bad things. <laughs> I got in a couple of fights, but never really to you know, show that I didn't deserve any kind of scholarship. Mm, it still looks pretty much the same. They painted the house different. They got a car in the driveway now. It's a different color? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the back, you know, just hanging out in the back, huh? Yeah. 622? Yeah.
How was it moving in California? It was cool, but it was pretty hard, you know. I was like 12 years old and people talk different and whatnot. That's what moves me first is fabric and color. My mom yesterday brought out some stuff, some old articles from like 93 about like Moja and stuff like that. She was like, in case you ever want to make a scrapbook. It's funny though because they quote you as saying some stuff and it's all, yeah, you have that? I tripped on it, it was all 20 year old Emile Poiret, I was all, damn.